Here we are, we're in the book of Micah. The last time we looked at was influence. There was a few verses under that passage that we didn't finish. I'd like to read those. There's one verse in, in there uh, that was brought up by the the writer of the lesson that I thought was, was powerful. And it's a, it's kind of a shadow problem that we could get into that it would look like we wouldn't do in wrong. Uh, but still, we, we've become a part of, of something that's not right. And I thought, well, and that's the way influence goes. Influence people's. Have you ever been on a jury? Yeah, yeah. The, you've got twelve people's mind there, and that's got to be. They've got to come to an agreement. And and sometimes it gets hung because there's one person there that says, "Well, I just don't feel like you feel about it, and, and I can't, I can't do that, or, or whatever." And so. Uh, it, as we're looking at the things of God and influence and the power of influence, look, look at these scriptures in Second Peter chapter three, verse number seventeen. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So sin, when it abounds, what does it do? It gets on you if you're not careful. And so we, what he's saying is, be, don't let don't let what the wicked's doing influence you or get on you, or cause you to fall from your own steadfastness. Look at First John chapter two verses fifteen and sixteen. This is kind of a black and white. The whole book of First uh, and Second and Third John. I mean, it's just black and white as you can get it, and I, I love it. It's so powerful. Here we are in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world... Is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the world, but is is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so, if if the world can get us to doing something that we enjoy, that that has a way of creeping us away from the things of God. And so we can't let that that let that get in the way of the Lord. And what we what we do with that is we live out of. Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you do that first, then everything else will be monitored under the agenda of God. Seek ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things will be added unto you. Now this next one is the scripture I want us to look at for just a little bit. And I'll, y'all tell me about, I, I looked it up in uh, uh, Matthew Henry. Uh, some of the stuff, but anyway, uh, here, here we are, and this is Exodus 23 and verse number 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. That That's pretty open right there, but you can't, you know, everybody's doing it. How, how, how long has that been messing with the world? Since the beginning of time. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to risk judgment. And that that right there, that's a that's a strong word. If if God has done spoke to you and and you know what the Bible says, it doesn't matter how many people don't you speak against God just to decline after many to risk judgment. Just to say, okay, uh, you're you're my friend, so I know really what's right, but there's so many of y'all, and I think what what uh, Matthew Henry said was pretty stout. He says, it, it doesn't matter how big a compliment you want to pay to those that's your friends. That's not worth going to hell for. <laughs> I thought, buddy, that's about as straight as you can get it. So don't decline. If you, if you know right. It doesn't matter how much weight is put on you. Don't decline after many to rest judgment. So don't back off and say, okay, 
I guess it, I guess it's okay for to live out of wedlock. How many times would that have been easy to say? Yeah, and there's a jillion other things just like it. I guess a little beer is okay. One can or a little wine. I mean, you can go on and on and on. But if, if you know what the scripture teaches and why, there's got to be a reason that you say, no, I, I can't go there. That, won't, that can't happen. And even though they said, well, they did it, they did it. I said, well, the Bible hasn't changed. And so God is asking us that even though we've got friends and loved ones, maybe our own family, that's, that's caught up in something, don't decline what you know is true. So give me some input. What do you think about it? I know I've read that scripture before, but it never got a hold of me like it did when I thought of the, the power of influence in it. Anybody else? Okay, baby. Um, there was a time years ago um, that we were on a walk and there was a couple ladies that she, she wanted to give this talk and talk about some things that had happened to her and her husband said, I don't, I don't want you to do that. I don't, I don't think that would be a good idea for you to bring that up and tell, you know, but she wanted to anyway. And so all those other little ladies were like, you know what, you're going to do the greater, you're going to help all those other women who have been through this, and we're behind you, and on and on. Like, she got the whole crowd in with them. And one lady looked over at me, because I was kind of in the back, she said, Shy, what do you think? And I thought, man, it'd be so easy right now <laughs> to join in with 30 the group. of them than to stand completely alone. But all I could think like what, what he said, I'm not going to hell over this. No. That ain't where, oh, I won't know these people in a few years probably, you know? Right. But at the moment, it's so strong. Yes, because yeah. you want to be accepted. Yes, I want it, to be this, The whole <laughs> thing is up, that's, that's it. So I, I just said, well, the Bible says to honor your husband. And I think what's going to happen is if you go against him, yes. even though you're going to help or you think you're going to help some other ladies, you got to go home to him in a few days. And that's and he's going to know that, that you have no respect for his uh, choice. And your marriage will suffer. Yes. And I don't think it's worth it. And I think you ought to honor your husband and not go that direction. But Well, she listened to the other 30. Yeah. She gave her talk. A few months later, they got a divorce. He was so upset with her for completely going again that they, they couldn't reconcile. They just fought so bad over it. They split up. Oh, man. But that was, um, man, that was a test for me. Yes. <laughs> Baby, that's a test for everybody, and not very many is passing it. That's the bad thing. Yeah. That, that's, thank you for the input. I just want to give this because it's so sweet. And it's such a testimony to what has happened in this church. <coughs> Little baby Shy, you know, Lacey's daughter, was at a, a women's meeting just a couple of weeks ago. And you know how women do in the meetings. Sometimes they kind of get. So this one lady stood up and said, we're going to play a game. And, you know, okay. Well, it was a song game. I've never heard of it. And she said, I'm going to start singing a song, and then y'all finish it. And so still everybody's like, okay. And she said, now it can be rock, or it can be country and western, or it can be everything. And little baby Shia said, I think it should be Christian. <laughs> and they just blew right past her. And so she kept going, in it and she said, now, ladies, no profanity. And shy, little baby shy again, all by herself, said, I think it should be Christian. <laughs> and she turned the tide. Bless her heart. Now, that little baby girl, 
that that took every gut in her to do that. I am so proud of her. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! That is wonderful. I mean, her mama didn't stand up. Her mama wasn't there. But she did it on her own. I, the, I'm telling you, isn't that awesome? Woo! She wouldn't be in the That's good. And when you know what's right, the decline, that, that's not a real bad word, is it? It's not like uh, adultery or killing somebody or divorcing your husband. It's not that. But look look at it. It's not worth going to hell over. No. Just to say, well, okay, let's get together. We know it's not right, but we'll do it. No. Don't decline after many to rest judgment. Don't change, don't change what you know is right. And so I thank you for standing up. Yes. I'm so sad that the rest of them didn't recognize that that's a scriptural stand that you took. And women's lib is a, is a crazy thing. I, I, I understand the deal of, of uh, women being, you know, like, like they are in, in the East, uh, in the Eastern nations where they, they beat them and, and tell them they can't talk and all that. that that's not God's way either. Is that they would have that they have no absolutely no voice at all, but on the other side, uh, God God made everything like it's supposed to be from the beginning, and if we stay in the in the round of, of the way the Lord spoke to it, and if there is a man to lead, that's what's got our world today in trouble. The 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 men are are chicken hearted. They ain't got a gut in them, no backbone. I mean, it's beating this thing. When it comes to serving God, it's just like. And so to see the men like in our church, I'm I'm so proud of our guys, man. I mean, we got a lot of men in the church. It's precious. It wants to, and, and plus, when there are other men come and they see somebody that works and everything else and still loves Jesus, that's like, well, this is different, <laughs> and it is different, and that's the way it it should be. The men the men should lead, uh, not not to run over other people, uh, and like the scripture says, if you if you love your wife you, you love yourself that's that's the real that's that's real tr truth of love okay any anybody else all right here's the next one in leviticus chapter 20 and verse number 23 <clears throat> and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which i cast out before you for they committed all these things and therefore I abhorred them. Whoo! When you when you know what's right and you willingly step over it, look what God does. It says, I hate what you're doing. I, I heard a deal. I never I don't know, Chris, you might know or Cutter if this actually happened. But this has been four or five years ago. I think it was the second or third time they had the, the big roping uh down there at uh was it Dallas or Fort Worth where they get in that big arena between at that, at that American? And uh, some of those guys got together and said, well, if you'll, now this, this is the story I heard. And like I said, I don't know, I still don't know if it's true or not. But some of the calf ropers said, the, the way we've come, uh, if, if, you, if you throw the rope in or don't get or something anyway, whoever wins, we'll share the money. And, and we, can make them, we can make them pay everybody or some, some kind of a deal. The way it was, Any of the three, three of the four, if they want it, it's worth a hundred thousand. But the other guy wins, it's worth a million. Mm -hmm. Because he he's a challenge. Player. He's yeah. a challenge. And so, one of the one of the world champion guys tried to get him. They said they would throw it and let him win it, and then they'd split that money. It's, instead of getting a hundred thousand, they get three hundred thousand. But look, look at that. Yeah, and, and I don't know. Did that, did that actually happen? They act, that actually. And so I, I don't know. That guy that started all that, his his career pretty much been washed up since then. You see, that, that's 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 like uh, that's like telling a jockey. No, no, they didn't do it, but but the deal did happen. I mean, so they talked about it. They talked about it. That guy that didn't do it. That one man stood up and said, "I ain't doing that." Yeah, he said, "I'm not doing it." And he said, "If I win, I win a million. If you win, you win what you win." Now that's that's the way it's supposed to be. That, that that's it. 
Boy, the, the world is, ooh, it's got some slippery roads. And, and you take people that's not, not saved. They, I mean, there's all kinds. Of, I don't care what they claim. If you go down that road, you're declining truth. It's got to be, it's got to be broken out. So uh, the Lord said, I, I abhor that. You know, God hates that kind of stuff. That, that's, that's chicken hearted. That's way out there. So no, 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 no. You shall not walk after the manners of the nation which I cast out before you for they committed all these things. Therefore, I abhorred them. I don't want him to hate me. I want him to love me. Don't you? Woo! Any, any more input? Okay, here we go. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse number 15. And they rejected his statues and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. So the, the influence just poured in there like, like gas on them. Couldn't get away from it. We've looked at the scripture on many occasions but it's one that's, that the writer has put down here is on Psalms 1 and 1 blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the un isn't that a influence nor standeth in the way of the sinner nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful and, and that's what you're getting together to do wrong is what is basically what he's talking about here. And he says, the blessing is on the man that won't go there, that won't decline truth, that won't back up from the word of God. Woo. Boy, uh, I've run into many, many occasions. I mean, I knew whenever I, whenever I said, I, I mean, not just one said it, but I, I want to say nearly hundreds of times, but lots of times since I've been a pastor, that if I would have just backed up a little bit, that the people would have stayed in the church. But because I told them what the Bible said, they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we ain't coming back. I, I was talking to a, a, a young man that had just got out of the jail. I mean, a nice looking young Spanish boy and, and his, the, his, his girlfriend, real beautiful lady. And they come to my office. They want to get. They want me. He want me to marry him. And so I started talking to him about that marriage is forever. It's not. You know, you the the bed hop and all that's gone when you get married. It's till death do us part. And I could I could see her. I could see her foot going like that. It's like <coughs> in a minute. Paul. Here it comes. She blowed up on me. She said, there ain't nobody believes that. That's the old stuff. That's a way back there. There ain't nobody in the world lives like that. I said, well, baby, you better get somebody else to marry y'all because I can't. If you, feel, if you don't feel like this is going to be holy matrimony, you need to, you need to go on. Well, they, they uh, married and... Uh, well, you know what? I'm not sure they married. No, I, they didn't marry. I know that just a little bit after that, uh, they was at a dance and somebody else was fooling with this boy's uh, girl, invited her to dance with him or something, and, and he, he killed him with a knife. Yeah. He was, he was just, uh, I mean, he was so... Uh, Jealous and hot tempered, and I mean, when he when he got mad, is he had instant anger, and he is tough, and and I mean, he fought all the time. That's what he's doing in the jailhouse, and she knew not to do it, but she was just a, a, a flutie. Yeah. Oh man, I hated it so bad. I, that guy, he had if if I if I could have just kept him around the things of God long enough, he he had such a want to. As long as he wouldn't, you know. Uh, you know, fooling around the dance hall and drinking and, and smoking pot or whatever. You know, if that all that does is bring death to you. And sure enough, he went to he went to the pen for life. And I mean he's like twenty one or two years old. It just broke my heart. 
I can still see him, man. I mean, he was so humble when I was talking to him about the Lord. He, you know, he never he never heard of, heard about God, but man, over that girl, and I mean, there was no, there was not an inch of nothing. <laughs> Which, really, if she loved him, she wouldn't be flirting with everybody in the building. And so, boom, here it comes. In Proverbs chapter 22, 24, and 25, I was trying to think of that boy's first name. I know his last name was Madrano. He was kin to Raymond, uh, like a nephew or something, of Raymond Madrano's. But, uh, horrible. I hate sin. And the devil. The devil sets traps like that for people. I mean, that, that's his. He, he wants it that way. Look at this passage. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. <laughs> he that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them. So don't get around them. <laughs> Stay away from them. They're going to take you to the bottom. Isaiah 52 and 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. And so when he's saying depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, he's just saying when you see wrong, get away from it. Leave it. Don't fool with it. Don't meddle with it. Don't say, well, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not going to get on me. No, get away from it. No more. Out of here. And then Exodus 20 and 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. <clears throat> and they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Woo! It's down to the wire. Okay, we're in chapter 2 of Micah. <clears throat> and, uh, Shai, you want to read for us those? It's not, this is not real bad words. Not, not, not big words. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> not real bad words. <laughs> I'm going to give you a mic, that way they can hear you better. <laughs> This is going to be chapter 2, 1 through 13. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When, they, when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of the hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man and his heritage. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil. In that day shall one take up a parable against you, and lament with a doleful lamentation, and say, We be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. Therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Prophesy ye not? Say they to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them, that they shall not take shame. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. You pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses, 
From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. Mm. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Bozrah, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. Okay. Now, the first 11 verses, thank you. The first 11 verses is, shows a corrupt society. And, and that's the wherewithal that the judgment comes. And our society, if you look at our society as a whole today, what would you say? It's pretty, pretty corrupt, isn't it? And almost anything, almost anything will go. And so the Lord's asking us, I mean, to really take a stand for him. I, I love what the writer said about verses 12 and 13, which... After, after I studied it a while, I, I can see what he's talking about. But he's talking about in verse 12 and 13 that the Lord, that the Lord's going to come and uh, gather the remnant up. And that, I guess that, that word remnant is the main stay of it. That, uh, that everybody's not going to be caught up in the wreck. That there's going to be some people that's right, and the Lord's going to gather them, even even back the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock. And so we know that the Lord, He is the shepherd. And there's nothing else in that whole uh, chapter or whole uh, yeah that whole chapter that speaks of anything like that except that they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. And then uh, the, verse 13 talks about the breaker. The breaker is come up before them. Uh, they have broken up, they have passed through the gate and are gone by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord <clears throat> on the head of them. I, I like that part about the, the breaker because we, we sang the song, I know the chain breaker, I know him by name. Yeah, I thought, that, that's pretty precious. Uh, when you look at, I think it's... Uh, the early early part of Luke, maybe Luke chapter four. I don't I don't remember it just off, but it's a precious passage where Jesus goes back home to Galilee and he, he stands up and reads the scriptures, and he said, "The Lord has sent me here uh, to preach uh, to the captive, set them free, op open the blind eyes." I mean, it's just a wonderful passage of of breaking those chains that's bound people before, and of course at the cross, the chain was broke. Amen. Now for Israel, because of their unbelief, that's it right there. Thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. So you can see those prayings, those chains being broken. The recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. One more scripture there, verse number 19. To preach the acceptable year of of the Lord. Wow. And so from the time that Jesus goes to Calvary till now, the door's been open. He, he says every day, this is the day of salvation and now is the accepted time because he's broke through for us. So what, what they didn't get completely registered in their spirit, Israel, that's come to the Gentile world and we have and their time is coming when they as a nation are going to recognize Christ. So I wanted, to, I wanted to put a little bit of good in there because the, the cause of the judgment is a corrupt society when people just keep leaking off. And this is like more of the influence problem that if you stay around wrong long enough, it, it, you, it, be, it begins to get on you. And he talks about them. He said they go to bed, but they won't go to sleep. 
they, they got so much going. They're such leaders. And they, they got stuff to do that they're, all they can think of is they're laying there rolling all night long thinking. And then they get up the next day and go do something. You know, they figure out how they can connive and get root somebody out and get their stuff. And they just like, just like, like they can't hardly sleep at night over because they're so, they're so wickedly trying to involve themselves and, and get gain. And here, these first two verses, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Isn't that a sad world? I mean, they can't sleep all night because they can't wait to get up. They figured out how they can, can stick you. <laughs> it's like, see, there's, there's some just last week that's talking about, I don't remember what it was now. Oh, they, they was uh, making bread for the prisoners, but they was putting sawdust in it. So they wouldn't have to waste flour. <laughs> well... Connie found some stuff the other day that we, we, I was asking her, I said, woman, I've been around sugar my whole life. And this sugar now in the same bag, when you pour it out, it's got smoke goes everywhere. You notice that? When you're emptying a bag up in your, like you're putting it in your canister or something, the, the white smoke just comes up out of it. Well, she looked it up and they're putting stuff in there that makes the sack heavy in the sugar. Yeah. And it, what's the sugar we buy all the time? What kind is it? Imperial. Yeah, Imperial. That's the top brand. I, I, I thought, well, if it's that other kind, but Imperial, what's wrong with them people? And it says it, it don't hurt you and it don't have no taste. It's just heavy. They need to be knocked in the head. What is that about? Of course, if they can get a cup full of that in each sack, guess what? They make that much money off the suckers that buys it. And that's us. They're doing the same thing with flour. Doing the same thing with flour. They had read those scriptures in the Old Testament about I abhor un, well, unjust balances. Unjust balances. Yes, yes, yes. And so there, it's it's you know, it's not dirt because you could see that, but it's a it's a product that they've learned that it has it don't hurt you. It just goes right into your sugar, and and that's the smoke that comes out when you're pouring it in there. It's not your granule sugar. I want y'all to look at a flower next time you go to town. If it's gold medal, it it says flower. That's all it's in. If you look at any other kind, well, they had this big to do up. You know how they make beer out of barley, and that and they crack open the barley and then they ferment it and then they squeeze it all out. But there's all that waste of the the byproduct of it. All that off of the barley. Mountains of it. Well, now they grind it up and it's in your flour. Look at any bag of flour and it'll have barley in it. Except gold metal. That makes me think of a story I read one time. And the, guy was, uh, the guy was selling baker flour, I guess. Baker was taking that flour and making pastries and selling it back to the guy that sold him the flour. And the guy from Flower said, you, you ripped me off. He said, well, I, sold, he said I, I made you the amount that your flower made. So anyway, what happened is he was getting ripped back off because he was shortchanging the baker. Yeah, with the flower. So he, he said. Because he was making it and selling it back to him. And he said, well, that, that's, that's what you sold me. That's all you sold me, exactly. So, man, it can, and you know. You think, well, what if it, if we said there's a cup of that white stuff in each five-pound bag of sugar? That's, that's not that much. I mean, even a spoonful is too much. I mean, that's the crooked part. But, and, you know, but, but you do that on a million bags. Look at the money. Look at the money. And that's the deal. And who would ever think of doing something that wicked? Yeah. Or, do, or doing to the flyer? Selling you stuff, and you wonder why it don't cook like it used to cook. Said, what happened? It's loco. And so, w when you see a society that's willing to let that go, there was a time whenever the USDA would say, "Nope." If it, if you say, and that, that's why they got to say what's in there. Who reads the level? You know, they got to say, "Well, uh, we want you to know we put a little bit of uh, barley in there." Yeah, it's husk. Barley husk after they squeezed it for the beer. No! 
So, woe to them that devise iniquity, this is verse 1, and work evil upon their bed. They're just laying there saying, well, here we are with this big company. Here's a way we can beat people. They'll think, they'll think that, we're, that we're really straight, but we're going under them all the time. Isn't that a sad way to live? Yeah. I wouldn't even do my wife like that. <laughs> she catch me. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to be that crooked. I don't want to be. Man, I, I, I love my dad. My dad, when he started bailing hay for the public, they'd say, Bear, them bales are too big. We can't even load them. <laughs> they'd weigh 120 pounds. <laughs> of course, the, the other guys was putting out them about that long. There's little sharp bales you could throw over your head. He said, no. He said, the Lord's watching me. And he said, I, I think if I, if, I give, if I sell good bales, that's gonna, God's going to honor me for that. And so his bells was big <laughs> and heavy. Yeah. And you hated hauling them. But when you open one up, you could feed a whole, whole pen full of cows with one. <laughs> it wasn't just three flakes of alfalfa in there. I mean, they've got the alfalfa down to about that long. <laughs> and still, what is it? $20 a bite. <laughs> Cutter, you buy any alfalfa? Uh oh. <laughs> Somebody's got to feed them horses. Oh, he feeds it. How much is it a bail? Is it the little? I calculated the other day. It's, it's ranging from about 25 to 35 cents a pound. Wow. Depending on how you buy it. Yeah. So they are selling it by the pound. No. But I mean, depending on what you buy, what, what bail size you buy, the bigger you go, the cheaper it gets. Oh, okay. So yeah. you buy it, you know. A big you, you buy this compressed. We just bought a couple of pallets of compressed hay. It's 50, 50 pounds. Yeah. 1750 pounds. Yeah. Daddy had alfalfa too, and I mean them alfalfa bales. <laughs> they weigh 85 pounds or 100. I don't know this heavy. <laughs> Woo! So when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. I can control this. There was a guy come all the way from Fluvanna. He said, Barry, I want you to bail my hay. And daddy told him, he said, there's two or three guys out there close to you. He said, man, I'm covered up. He said, you bail big bales. And you charge the same thing for the big bales, for bailing the big bales, as they charge for the little ones. <laughs> he said, well, I'll be there, but it's going to be a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a crazy, it's a crazy world. But you can more money and less, less. And so, okay. Verse number two: They covet fields; they take them by violence. And really, they they may not be, uh, you know, taking physical hide off of you. But after a while, it's it's a violence of its own because uh, you're you're paying for more than you're getting regularly, and that affects that affects everything that you do. So that that is getting getting rough in a way. They coveted, they stole others, uh, they stole property and homes, stole inheritances, inheritances. <clears throat> And then he said, for this, the judgment's coming. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. You're not going to get by this. You can run, but you're not going to get by it because God's, God's going to check your hand. And so whatever we do is known by the Lord. And so we want we to be, be tender before him. Uh, in, it's in the church world. Uh, there's all kinds of ways. We we had a we had a preacher, and I mean this is this is crazy, but being being on the pressure borders, all kinds of stuff happens. This is not a real common thing, but this guy uh, had uh, was helping the youth department, and they had a product that they were selling, and he took some of it and was going to set it for his youth group, and where he could help the the youth the youth the, the district youth department, all that. Anyway. When it come around to, to either the money or the product back, the product was gone. So it was several hundred dollars. So the, uh, they talked to him. Uh, the decap talked to him, and he said, "Well, he said, uh, what I did, 
said, you know, my, my daddy used to steal when he didn't have money. And so I, I sold it and took the money because I needed it. I mean, even a, even a person that just got saved, that's one thing. But a preacher? I said, no. That, that dog just can't trot around in this pack. There's something. Something's got to give. You either pay the money back and, and go clean the deal up or turn your license in. That's, a, that's crooked. And so it, it, can, it can happen anywhere. And that, that being said, we, we know what the Lord says. And you know what? If you do right, good's going to come. You do, do it wrong. If you make a million dollars, he said, you get it that way, it'll get away from you the same way. Money, money that's gotten that way bad, because what it does. Proverbs 23 says it takes wings and it flies away from you. you. There's no way you can get it. And so he says in verse number three, says your neck, your neck can't get away from this. It's going to come to pass. Verse number four, in that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful limita- lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. So, he's talking about here in verse number four. Would be ridiculed and mocked by others because of the loss of all their property and possession. So one day these has been conniving. They're going to look around and everything they had is going to be taken away from them. Have you ever heard of chapter 11? Yeah. People... Grabbing like crazy, going like, well, there's, there's not a bottom to nothing. But all of a sudden, the jig's up. It may take a year, 10 years, 12 years. But if you, if you go far enough, long enough, after a while, it'll catch up. My uncle always said, <clears throat> uh, anytime that your upkeep, yeah, your, out, your outgo exceeds your income. Your upkeep becomes your downfall. Boom. Hits the bottom. That's it right there. Wow. And so if you do right all time, guess what? The blessing of the Lord is following you all time. And if you do wrong, boom. We, we In the cow industry, we had a guy. I mean, I've known this guy for years. You've seen him at all the cow sales. He's probably uh, 45, lived down at Blackwell. And he's going everywhere, buying cows at Big Springs. Uh, they had a, a sale at Sweetwater then and over at Midland. And I mean, just all, all around. And one, one day, uh, he, he drove down from the house to the gate down there at Blackwell. I had a real nice place back in there and shot himself right there at the gate. And what he'd been doing, he'd been buying cattle on somebody else's money hoping that the, when he sold the other ones, he could pay them back. And he did that so long, he got so extended that there was no way you could ever, whenever, whenever they got a hold of him and said, you are either going to have to produce the cattle or the money. And he didn't have either one. He had spent all of that. And so instead, he leaves a wife and children at home and goes and blows his brains out. And that, you know, Boy, what, you think the devil doesn't set traps, man? And so, when when you when you look at the scriptures like that, it said you're not going to get away if if you fool with that kind of a world. The devil's got a, he's got a a trap set for you. Therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a card by lot in the congregation of the Lord. In other words, there's not going to be a preacher. You won't listen to nobody. So he said, I'm not even going to give you a prophet that will say, thus saith the Lord, because you wouldn't listen anyway. None's going to tell you. Just go ahead and get your due done. You're going to go down anyway. <laughs> wow. That's pretty strong words from Micah, isn't it? Strong words. And it's God's, it's God's warning of coming judgment. And he's warned us because he loves us. Not, not because he hates people. He's saying that this, if you, if you get into a deal like that, that's, that's dirty. Uh, that's a dirty way to live. And it's not going, it's not going to work. Uh, maybe y'all have an example. Anybody else? This is where we don't usually live. <laughs> and aren't you thankful? <laughs> but you can see it's out there. So he talks about Here's one of the thoughts he, he brought out of this. How many of us, and I thought, 
I thought, Lord, we're, we're a long way from this, but I mean, he's just putting out some things to think about. How many of us lie sleepless in a bed at night, focusing on thoughts on the useless, petty, selfish, immoral, materialistic things of the world? Though we may not devise ways to steal houses, property, or an inheritance, perhaps we're guilty of planning evil on a smaller scale, such as slipping something from the office into our briefcase, purse, or shopping bag, spreading a rumor or lie about an individual company, church, or any organization. I had a lady call me today, and she had just going on, and uh, one of the people in, in their church had, has just cast a guy, everywhere, everywhere they're going, they're just cast, spreading spreading stuff they're out of town is right over here in our community telling people just that how that they're you know they're teaching and wrong and just crazy and I mean it, it's just and that, that's not 20 years ago that was today <laughs> so when when people you know they get mad and angry they just go they just say, say whatever every once in a while they talk about me and Connie <laughs> and we're sweet <laughs> Part of the time, <laughs> at least I am my one now. <laughs> She's looking me over good. So, gossiping, taking credit for someone else's work. That's, what, what do they call that? Uh, pleasurism? pleasurism? Yeah. And so, if somebody else did it, give them, give them the honor for doing it. That's a good way in it. Taking uh, a shoplifting, stealing information at work, or betraying our employer. Lying to a spouse or employer to cover up a mistake or a misdeed. Now, so, sometimes I don't tell Connie everything. <laughs> and so when she finds out, I said, well, I told you as far as I wanted you to. I said, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes she does the same thing. She says, I'm going to love with Nancy. And uh, when you come back, yeah, there's more than just a doctor's appointment. <laughs> The whole town has been raffled. <laughs> yeah. <And> so, <laughs> and she didn't say she wasn't going to them other deals. Okay. All right. I can see we're getting too close. We're not shoplifting yet. Stealing information at work or betraying our employer. Lying to a spouse or employer to cover up a mistake or a misdeed. I mean, those are things that could happen so easy, especially when you're under the gun. Always tell the truth. If it costs you your job, tell the truth. Woo! If you have to get on your knees and repent before them and God, tell the truth. Then when you leave, you're clean. They're going to find out about it anyway. The Lord said in, in Exodus, what is it, Exodus? No, it's in Numbers, like 29, 33 or 33, 29, something like that. Be sure your sins will find you out. Woo! You may think you're so clever, they'll never know it. But God's got a way of just putting it right out there in the open and say, look at this. And guess whose name's on it? It's like, ah! It wasn't me. Okay. Using other people or lying to get ahead at school or any other activity. So, man, the scope is pretty wide. And as the Lord let us keep everything pure in our hearts. He's got some scriptures here. Uh, and he's talking about here, whatever our area, our area of weakness, God warns us against thinking evil thoughts and against planning or plotting evil. Listen to God's holy word. Here we are in Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? They've not said nothing. They're just thinking. Does he know us? <laughs> yeah. Man, I loved to trade horses when I was, I was young. When I got saved, my horse trading was different. <laughs> I'd, I'd get by one of them old rank ones, just leave them. <laughs> you know, he's yours. You bought him. <laughs> but now I got to tell them, 
you probably won't get very far till he bucks you off. <laughs> so if you want him, you want to know. You want to know that's out there. <laughs> and that does mess with the sale a little bit too. <laughs> okay. Anybody? <laughs> okay. Nobody. <clears throat> what about the car salesman? Okay. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. <clears throat> And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Man. So that's why we've got to use Sonia's scripture. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There, there was a guy here in our community. I, I just a little bit. We'd go down there every, every once in a while. We had a flat. We'd go down there, and his, his name was uh, Bull Early. He he was real funny, always cutting up stuff, laughing, giving us a piece of gum. You know, we like I said, we're just kids. And he's telling Dad one day, he said, Barry, you knew I went to the pen, didn't you? And Dad said, yeah. And he said, he said, you know what I went for? I said, no. He said, well, I was getting them tires that was back in World War II, and uh, the, the government had confiscated all the rubber for the, for the war. And so there was people who had, you know, two cars in the garage and no tires to put on them. They, they just, you know, just run them till they wouldn't no count, and they couldn't get no no tires until we got past the wire. Well, he's getting them under under the fence somehow, grinding the serial number off of them and selling them like crazy. And so they gathered him up and sent him to the penitentiary. <laughs> sent him to the penitentiary. <laughs> he said, Barry. He said, <laughs> he said, I was in commissary. And he said, when they'd bring a load of food in, I would unload it. He said, I could open up a whole box full of them buying the sausages. He said, I could thump the bottom and tell the ones that had seven weenies in it. He said, sometimes they'd leave that middle weenie out. I wanted it. <laughs> so he said, before I opened mine, I thumped them bottoms. And did you know since then, I have found a, a deal of weenies with only six weenies in it. And every time, I, every time that happens, it's like like two or three times in my whole life, I said, "Oh, Bull Early's right." <laughs> anyway, he come back and uh, he, he said, "You know what I did when I got back from the penitentiary?" Dad said, "No." He said, "I put a full page ad in the Snyder Daily News on the front page." I'm back from the pen and I'm mighty thin and I'm going back into business again. <laughs> He didn't last long here in Snyder. He took off. I don't know if he's still, do you know if he's still alive or not now, baby? I, don't know. I haven't seen or heard of him in years. He, he what now? Did he have a filling Yes. Yeah, he had a filling station just off the square on the La Mesa Highway down on the left. Yeah. He, he was he was something else now. He's funny. But he, <laughs> but you, you do wrong. It's going to come back and bite you. Not going to work. Okay, we got enough for a few more scriptures here. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number, no, I'm sorry, Job 5 and 12. <clears throat> Job 5 and 12, he disappointeth the, the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise they're doing everything they can to get it to, to cheat a little bit. And the Lord, look what the Lord says. They can't perform their enterprise. Come in here. God bless y'all. We're going to, one more scripture, then we'll, we'll let y'all give y'all scriptures. <clears throat> it, this is going to be in Psalm chapter 33 and verse number 10. Psalm 33. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. Lord, help our heathen with that scripture. <laughs> that their vice, that their devices would be of none effect. Amen. Okay. How about some scriptures? Okay, baby. Uh, 